Well, you will have heard this week that there was an absolutely shocking, disgraceful report on grooming gangs in Rochdale. What actually happened over many years, uh, it's one of the worst instances of British institutional failure over the past couple of decades. We keep hearing about these failures, the post office, the NHS on its knees, and the fact that people who should have been safeguarded, that other story this week, do you know what, I couldn't even listen to it. I actually turned the television off because I couldn't listen to the story of the two-year-old who starved uh, to death because his father had had a heart attack and social services didn't do, I think, what they should have done. I couldn't actually listen to that story. It was so unbelievably upsetting. Now we have a big report into what happened with the Rochdale grooming gangs. The paedophiles, the paedophiles who exploited and raped young girls. 173 pages, it damningly chronicles the failure of police, local authorities, other agencies to protect children in northern communities from a gang of sex abusers between 2004 and 2013. Has anything got any better? I think that's a big question. Are we trying to have a police force that is actually catching criminals, catching paedophiles and rapists, or are we having a police force that is too politically correct and won't uh, go forward and won't solve crime because they're worried what could happen? Nine men were convicted following Operation Span, the investigation into grooming in children in 2012. There have been a further 135 arrests, 432 charges and 32 convictions. More trials are going to be held later this year. Greater Manchester Police emerged from this really discredited. Their Chief Constable Stephen Watson said, we have failed you. I want to talk about this with Peter Blexley, who's a former Metropolitan Police detective. Hello, Peter. Good morning. Uh, Peter, I should say, is also the host of a, a great show, which we've been showing on the, on the, on the uh, station last night. And you can watch it on uh, the uh, on Catch Up as well. Crime Suspects is on YouTube, on Talk TV, on Fridays at 9.30 p.m. Uh, we also have Ralph Schulhammer uh, as well in the studio for the whole hour. He's an economist and political theorist at Webster University. I'm going to come to you in a second on grooming gangs. But, Peter, first of all, your reaction to this report. Well, the greatest testimony I can pay to victims, survivors, and the redoubtable Maggie Oliver that truly Had astonishing Had her on earlier this week, great campaigner. Yeah, and I'm going to over-promote myself and say she's a friend of mine. This remarkable woman, and, and everybody, is to say this report is not the closing chapter. This is going on. This type of offending continues. And the harsh fact of the matter is that as we speak, there are paedophile, rapists, groomers, gang members out there who need to have their collars felt. And at the moment, that is not happening. There are failings, multiple failings, systemic failings by police services, so much of which was highlighted about Greater Manchester Police in this report, and others. Policing needs to grow a spine and remind itself with a very long, harsh look in the mirror that it is a public service and victims are being failed. Victims are being failed, not just by the police, but by the justice system as well, Peter. A 13-year-old girl, 13 years old, who was raped and impregnated and who gave evidence in court was appalled that her perpetrator was only found guilty of conspiracy to engage in sexual activity with a child, but not rape and was out in prison on licence after four years. She encountered him again in a supermarket. Speak to a motorist, and they will invariably tell you that police go for the easy hit. Yeah. That easy ticket that can be issued for a minor parking or other traffic violation. To convict people of the serious crimes requires resources. Yeah experienced detectives who know what they're looking for and more importantly know where to look forensic support often which again comes at a cost and whilst all this completely abominable offending was happening and maggie was trying to get the truth told there was a chief constable of greater manchester peter fahey oh forgive me sir peter fahey right and ian hopkins again who tried to silence and they use an essentially unsatisfactory police complaints process mm. to, to silence people and to silence victims and to silence whistleblowers. This report, as damning as it is, doesn't mean that everything has been put in order in these houses of policing because it fundamentally has not. 
Policing is in crisis. Victims are being failed. The public are all at greater risk than we used to be. And it's a scandal. Ross Schulhammer, you've been waiting patiently on this. From your perspective, you're an economist and political theorist at Webster University. You're also the most popular guest I've ever had on my show. <laughs> but on this grooming gang's um, particular aspect, what's your perspective on this? Uh, well, I'm, if you look at I think Peter mentioned very nicely the, the systemic problems. And there is, I'm sure that many of you remember a couple of years back or a couple of decades back, there was this habit where people had little wristbands that said, what would Jesus do? Yeah. Uh, and I think, and this sounds like, like a horrible joke, but I actually mind it quite seriously. I think nowadays in politics, all over the West, not just in Britain, we have kind of this attitude that we look at a problem and we ask ourselves the question, what would Hitler do? And I mean this quite literally because what that's, you, a bit, that's a very strong statement. It's a strong you, statement. But it? what I mean by this is we look at a potential policy and then we say, is this a kind of policy that, that you know, that, that fascism that, that Hitler would approve of? And if the answer is yes, we immediately get both kind of, you know, in almost a gut reaction, we have an inclination to disagree or to not agree with such a policy. So if we talk about the grooming gangs, for example, if these grooming gangs would all be Germans who came to Great Britain, I don't think we would have this kind of a debate. But the fact that a lot of the people who participated in this have a very specific specific migrant background, it immediately caused this kind of unease because one said exactly as they said, right, they were afraid of being accused of racism. So the idea then was better to accept or to turn a blind eye to the abuse of these girls than to be than being accused of being a racist. Do you really think that's what happened? Do you think that, that that's a fair statement to say that this was simply saying do you know what, this is a cultural issue, therefore we're going to back away from this. Is no, that, I'm 100% convinced of it. But do, you, we, do you believe that as well, Peter? Can, can I make one last point? Sure, yes, of course. Because, sorry, because what we do, and this is, the, the problem particularly with sexual violence against girls and women is not just happening in Britain, it's happening all over Europe, and the patterns are everywhere the same. So I think we have to look at what is the same argument, what is the same motivation when we try to find out why this is happening, and why both the media in many cases and public services turn a blind eye to it. And I think we come always to this final thing, that they say we are terrified of being you know, characterized as racist. So we kind of return to an age where we quite literally sacrifice young girls, where we sacrifice virgins on the altar of what is multiculturalism or what is kind of this newfound idea of, of anti-fascism, if you want. That's a very, very strong statement. Peter, what do you make of that? It's fundamentally correct. It's not the sole basis for inactivity by the police. There was an element of the police protecting themselves. They love to, particularly in the senior ranks, they love to protect their position, yeah. their pensions, and of course, their trips to the palaces and the castles where they get gongs pinned on them. And Sir Peter Fahey and I had a rather lively debate live on a te television channel once upon a time. And he was blaming all of the ills on Greater Manchester Police on austerity, some years after austerity kind of was largely over and some years after he'd retired. So I challenged him on this, as you might not be surprised to hear, and I said, so what did you do about it, mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, this austerity, mm -hmm. which you are using as an excuse for failing victims? He said, I wrote a letter. Well, I never, mm. just the kind of powerful, resourceful police chief you need to lead one of the biggest police services in the country. He wrote a letter. Yeah, 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 and actually that's... This the spinelessness that many people would see in regard to senior police officers. This idea that you know we keep hearing from these inquiries, lessons will be learned. I mean, I hate that phrase, and um, it's it's just. I just wonder when other police forces look at this, will they actually learn the lessons, Peter? What do you think of that? Well, the Metropolitan Police, which, of course, whose reputation has been shredded in recent years, but actually had a good news story this week yeah. and got a lot of credit from the public because do you know what they did? They sent undercover cops out onto the streets of Soho and Kensington and Chelsea where watch robberies were prevalent and the undercover cops got robbed and there was the team, like the Sweeney from the old days, my era, my kind of police. Shut it. Rugby tackling, batting in them, tasering them and putting these robbers in front of court. Yes. So the Met got a load of favourable comments from the public because that's what they want from policing. And then, of course, the Met fall in to this wokey, fluffy kind of PR nonsense. They now have strap expressions. If you Google the Metropolitan Police logo, it now comes up with more trust, less crime, higher standards. Yes, It's yes. just a load of faff. 
it means nothing. They'll probably fail on all three fronts. And it's just nonsense. The police need to reconnect with the public. They need to abandon the dancing, the face painting. I know some steps have been made to that. Standards do need to be raised. But policing needs to connect with what it is. It's a public service. It is not a popularity contest. You're absolutely right. And I've got someone who's messaged me who I trust on this. This is a viewer of the programme who I trust. I'm not going to name him because he doesn't want to be named. But he says... Grooming by Pakistani men is still going on at a large scale. The police are still not investigating properly in Rotherham due to political correctness. Nothing has been learned and most media outlets won't report it until the doodah hits the fan. It's a national disgrace and spineless policing. That is a viewer of this programme who doesn't want to be identified for a very, very good reason. He has a connection to some of this in terms of the, the law enforcement aspect of it. So I want to be respectful to him. But I'm just going to read this out again. Grooming by Pakistani men is still going on at a large scale. The police are still not investigating properly in Rotherham due to political correctness. Nothing has been learned and most media outlets won't report it until, as this person puts it, the doodah hits the fan. It's a national disgrace and spineless policing. Ralph? I want to pick out the point because I think what Peter said was so important. It's not just that it fails the public. Um, if you look back in British history, in the 1800s, about 50% of prostitutes in London were under 50, 15 years of age. Um, and then you had a movement within the Enlightenment, within the British Enlightenment, that said, this is wrong, right? We cannot allow this. And both kind of the state and the public mobilised against this. And luckily, now in London, at least, I hope we don't have prostitutes under the age of 15. But with these grooming gangs, you kind of return to this, right? Now you have these things happening. Yeah. And it's not just a policing issue. You allow certain cultural milieus to appear where this is tolerated. And I think this is not just about the exploitation of the girls. I think it's also a sense of, we can do it here because the British are too weak to do anything against it, right? This is also a form of, of if you will, a, of revolt against the state. Mm. So I think there is much, much more going on because in these areas, in these social milieus, people know what's going on and it is tolerated. So it's a policing problem, but it's also a cultural problem that we allow these things to arise in the first place. And, and that is very frustrating. I want to talk to Jackie in Manchester, who's been waiting very patiently to put a question both to Ralph and to uh, Peter. Jackie, you're very welcome. Thanks for your call on 0344 499 1000. What would you like to say, Jackie? Um, I live in a town that's quite near to Rochdale and we have had our own problems uh, with grooming gangs that it's still going on to this day. Now, we've we've had a review that, that highlighted this to the public, um, but when you've got situations where GMP have... Greater Manchester uh, Police, yeah. Yeah, Greater Manchester Police, uh, when people have tried to protest, They've tried to do things about it. They've been threatened with arrest. They've been banned from council um, public meetings. Um, we've had people that have been threatened with violence um, from the Muslim community uh, who have raised allegations and have had to leave town. How do ordinary people protect the kids and fight against the system? Really good question. Stay on the line, Jackie, because I want your reaction to what both men are going to say. Peter, what do you think? What, how can people actually stand up and say this properly? I mean, you mentioned Maggie Oliver, who's done great things, but she was obviously in a position of authority having been in the police. But for ordinary people who want to make a point about this, what should they do? Well, just on the Maggie point here, you know, she had to surrender her career and, of course, her paycheck and, and, and suffer considerable hardship in order to make her voice heard. And it's only through relentlessly banging on doors that were firmly locked that she's managed to be heard, create the foundation and do so much for victims and survivors. She's truly exceptional. But to, to answer yours and Jackie's question, this is an appalling situation that we've got. And how are we, and I say we, a collective we, gonna tackle it? Are we gonna continue to use Maggie's foundation for example but how do we get the voices heard more widespread and I think it's a very good point in terms of protecting the children then I'm awfully sorry but we're going to have to say to the white teenage and younger girls of so many places across the UK that your freedoms are going to have to be curtailed for a little bit Right. and this 
creates a sickness feeling in the pit of my stomach, as I have to say it, because if you step out of that door, these revolting, disgusting, predatory, raping paedophiles will scoop you up, ply you with drink, ply you with drugs, and use you as an object. And so there is a, a responsibility now upon parents and carers to keep these young women safe. And if we have to surrender some of our freedoms in order to do that, so be it. Let's do it. Let's deny them the victims while still campaigning and shouting from the rooftops. Rolf, what do you uh, make of that? I, in principle, I agree with Peter, but it sounds to me, correct me if I misunderstood you, it sounds more like we want to try to lock away the potential victims instead of going after the perpetrators. And that's why I said I'm so good oh, I understand. Okay, by having yeah. to say that. You know, but, 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 not... As Peter has correctly pointed out, going after the perpetrators has failed. The, the, the system doesn't work. Well, I think one of the reasons, and this is I'm so glad that Jackie called, because, and this is, of course, probably not the kind of advice that she wants to hear, but people need to speak up. They need to make pressure on the media. They, you know, everything there is, every every potential megaphone they have, they need to use. Because I want to, don't mince my words here, in these cases, I think the government is colluding in evil. I know we no longer use these terms, like we no longer believe in these things, but what other, how else would you describe it? Like the example you read before about the 13-year-old girl. What other term do you want to use? Or even what you said, Peter, right? When we find ourselves in a situation where we have to tell our young people, our young girls, stay at home, we can't let you go out because yeah. you're at such great risk. This is this is not a kind of society anybody wants to live in. And we have to go out and say the British people are very reasonable. They are not racist. Um, um, this is not driven by any kind of bigotry, animosity. This is driven by true concern, justified concern about what's going on in our streets. And as I said, we should use these terms. This is evil that is happening and it needs to be confronted. And if the media is not willing to, to talk about it, with exceptions like Talk TV and you, Peter, right, we should call them out for it. Right? If public servants are not willing to talk yeah. about it, we yeah. should call them out for it. This is really a moment where pressure needs to be increased. Peter, final thought from you and then I want to go back to Jackie. Yeah, I am. It sticks in the back of my throat, Ralph, when I say, you know, lock up your daughters. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, please, please yeah. take great care of them. It's like when I say to people who have an expensive watch that their talent and hard work has managed to achieve for them, and I say, please don't wear that out at night. You know, these things are so alien to me yes. as a former police officer because I want teenage girls going out and enjoying themselves and their friends' company and going to the park and doing whatever what they want to do because I want a police service that is on the streets and is, is controlling those streets, making them a hostile environment for criminals so that people can enjoy their freedoms. But at the moment, with the shocking state of policing, I find myself deeply regretting the fact that I have to say this.